Good afternoon to you. Mark Sada, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Friday, June twenty second, 2018. The Atlantic Basin for right now, nice and quiet. Going to stay that way over the next five days, it does appear. If we look at the North Pacific, there's a couple of areas to watch. Interesting how one of them wants to head west and the other one wants to head north. So we'll have to see how these shake out over time. If we click on this, let's see, we should be able to zoom in. Look at that, it's not going to let me, so let's do that. There we go. So here's a satellite graphical version of what we're looking at. It's not surprising, as we talked yesterday with Eric Webb, about the state of the Pacific, that we would see potential development here. 40% and 30% respectively represented by the orange and the yellow over the next couple of days. But then, if we look out again beyond that time frame at the five days, it gets a little bit higher, 70% for the easternmost system, 50% for the westernmost. Their proximity to each other will probably inhibit rapid development, but it looks like something will try to congeal in this area over the next five days or so, bringing the eastern Pacific back into the limelight. And in fact, that's where most of the activity has been and a bulk of the intensity has been this year. No major typhoons, no super typhoons or anything like that in the western Pacific, but we have had two strong hurricanes in this vicinity uh, of the eastern Pacific with Aletta, and then on its heels was Bud, both of them reaching Category 4, for what it's worth. If you're keeping score at home, that's how that works out. Look at the radar. Finally, for the most part, over Texas here, it's blank. Probably a few hit and miss showers that aren't showing up on this particular resolution, but it is really good to see the heavy rainfall has left the building and the sun is out in most locations. That's very good news. And you can begin to dry out. Although the dew points, I was reading about that on Twitter from Matt Lanza in Houston and um, talking about 80, 81 degree dew points. 70 is like uncomfortable and you're talking about 80 81 degree dew point 79 to 81 no thank you i responded with four letters and they are four letters that you can use on the air here and those were p a s s pass i don't like 80 degree dew points well i guess if you're working in a hurricane situation i don't necessarily like it but you just have to deal with it i'm glad i don't have to deal with it outside very much myself that's uncomfortable. So look, the tropics are quiet, and we expect that this time of year. But I want to show you, <clears throat> as my voice cracks a little bit, I just took a nap a little while ago, to be honest with you. So I got this little just woke up feeling. Was up very early this morning, then went to the family out to the water park for a few hours. Came back, took a nap, and here I am. But uh, So I want to show you something. It's got to explain it when the voice cracks that... No, I'm not going through second round of puberty, although if I grew another foot tall, then maybe I could live my dream of playing basketball. Just kidding. So with things being quiet, let's look down the road a spell and see if there are any changes afoot, all right? And one of the ways we do that, you know that I really like to show the GFS, and it's not necessarily that I think the GFS is a superior model over everything else. The ease of the display from the INSEPT site, and the different layers that you can look at. For the most part, it's a good Genesis tool for me. And remember, I like to show you what I look at and kind of bring you into my world. I'm just publishing these videos so that you can see it as well. And those are the things I usually uh, peruse, the GFS. And then we'll look at the European. But the European model, the ECMWF, is not as readily available. It's run twice a day. The in-depth products are only available by substantial paid subscription because they are part of a, I think it's 20 nation, maybe that's too many, but it's a several nation consortium of nations that pitch in money like subscribers, right? And then big corporations will also pay and you get these really in-depth analyses. So on the public side, we have great people like Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. We'll move this out of the way. And have, he'll, he'll provide what they provide free 
for us to analyze ourselves. Does that make sense? So here we are. And what we're looking at is this um, 10 day window of the ensemble prediction system where we're looking at all the different members and you get sort of a consensus or an average or whatever. And we have an anomaly here. And it's amazing all these different charts that we can look at. And so we can view the departures from normal uh, on just about any level. So in this case, we're going to look at the mean sea level pressure and the anomaly from that, the departure from normal, the anomaly of that sea level pressure based on eh, roughly, what is that, 1981 through 2010 climatology. So there's your window of past to look at the present and the future. Does that make sense? So here we are, the starting chart, very high pressure, generally speaking, really stacked up over the Atlantic. And as such, these reds that kind of fade out down here, I love the gradation that Levi Cowan displays these with because we can see these mountains of air. All right, so these isobars, these lines of equal pressure, are very analogous to contour lines on a topographic map. I'm a geographer, and that's what we look at. We look at topographic maps, hills, valleys, mountains, everything in between. You look at contour lines and intervals that give you ideas of height of mountains or depths of valleys or oceans, and the ocean is called bathymetry. So in the atmosphere, you've got these lines here that represent pressure, and the closer they are together, the more wind there is, and then using this red shading that Levi has put in, we can see initially that the pressure pattern across the deep tropics is anomalously high. It's higher than it should be. Therefore, the trade winds are probably blowing a little faster than they should be down here, relative to average anyway. I don't want to say should be, but against the means, at least you know what we've seen get going back to uh, 1981, I guess, is a way to look at it. And then over North America here, the pressure has uh, generally been lower as of late, and it has been stormy across this part of the country, and of course through down here. So that makes sense. So now, let's move through the next 10 days. Not often that I'm going to show you a 10-day forecast for anything, but in, in this case, these are very large pieces of the puzzle. We're not necessarily looking to see if something develops here in the smaller scale, i.e. a tropical cyclone, and then where it ends up, you know, like that, hmm, where is it going to go in 10 days? No, 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 no. We're going to look at the larger pattern. Yes, that can also be erroneous that far out, but it's less prone to these errors because we're talking about larger pieces of the puzzle. So let's do that. Let's move forward. So this is the initial 24 hours out, kind of the same, right? And as you go through time, look what happens by 48 hours. The high weakens a little bit. It also slides a little bit to the east. Uh, this separates out a little bit. And you start to see this bluish color down along the extreme eastern part of the tropical Atlantic. Lower than normal pressure. Hmm. What could that mean? Well, let's keep on moving ahead in time. 72 hours. Same thing. The high pressure is moving even more to the east. This Bermuda Azores high, now it's more the Bermuda high. There's Bermuda right there. Whereas the Azores high, it's kind of taking a hike up here, split off and head towards the UK. And then you have building heights, anomalously so, coming out of Canada. Interesting. And as a result, the pressures are lowering across the tropical Atlantic, and that would reduce the trade winds. Also interesting, moving on out to day four, a continuation of the same thing there, day five. Wow, now we have, I mean, if this was like September and you had a hurricane down here, forget it. That would probably cruise right on into the southeast, but that's a different story for a different month. What we're seeing is a lack of dominating anomalous high pressure over the Atlantic and the subtropics. And, check it out, it reduces the pressure down here in the deep tropics. That'll do two things. It'll allow for more convergence as the air slows down. It's able to pile up on itself better. 
it allows for potentially more vorticity and spin in the atmosphere. And also, it'll weaken those trade winds from Africa all the way over to the Lesser Antilles if this verifies. And then look, over here the pressures are higher than the average. So the air is not just screaming across the deep tropics. It's slower here and running into the uh, piling up of air along Central America and Northwest South America. And that's also an interesting setup. And uh, we'll see. You know, Nothing else really to infer from this except the big puzzle pieces. Once they are in place, does something happen out of the pattern? And I've learned how to recognize that to some extent from some great people out there, and I've talked about them before. Uh, eventually we'll have one or two of them on our Thursday phone a friend segment. Um, so then by uh, 168 hours out, did I skip day six? Probably, but that's fine. Notice how far north the high is. Anomalous high pressure way up here in the northern latitudes, and then down here in the deep tropics still right about where it should be or slightly below average pressures in the tropical Atlantic. And then day eight, same thing. Day nine, even more so. Look at all of that lower pressure than we were used to seeing, so to speak. This definitely has my attention because you also see a little bit of a lower pressure here in the northeast Gulf of Mexico. Huh. And this is an average the Ensemble Prediction System, lots of members of the Ensemble Group, and this is what you get out of that. So a lot of members are seeing this, and this is what you get in this sort of uh, amalgamation of it all and a consensus of it so that by day 10, this is really, really eye-opening. Higher pressure up here over northeast North America, lower pressure all across the deep tropics. If that's not a recipe for something to happen somewhere, I don't know what else to tell you. So this shows me that within about 10 days and then beyond, if this verifies, and even if it's close to this, maybe 80%, you know, and I don't know what the skill score is for Northern Hemisphere, European, you know, uh, standard deviation from normal, blah, blah, blah. I haven't checked it, but... Generally speaking, the European is supposed to be very, very good. And so looking at this pattern, it tells me, I mean, you can see as clear as I can, all that red down here that we started off with over here, gone. And it's replaced by lower than normal pressures. So we're going to have to really watch over, what is that? Today's the 22nd, 10 days from now, you know, July 2nd roughly. Something like that. So as we approach the 4th of July period, possibly something developing somewhere in the western basin. I wouldn't think that it's going to come out of the deep tropics. Water temperatures are still too cool. Probably have dry air still sitting out there. Despite the slowing down of the trades and the lowering of the pressures, maybe some homegrown development. And I know one of you out there has been really focusing on the homegrown, and here's the first time I'm going to talk about it. There you go. And you know who you are, Winx Club. I'm looking at you, or I'm talking to you today. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be watching that very closely. Does this mean something will happen? Not at all. And it doesn't mean that it has to happen. So you can have a favorable pattern, and it doesn't necessarily automatically kick off something to happen. But the pattern is setting up to be different than we're seeing now, and sometimes the change in the pattern is enough to kick something off in the tropics. So there you go. That'll be something to watch for. Tomorrow, I will not be here. I have to take my son uh, somewhere into near Charlotte, North Carolina. He's He does acting, and he's going to be doing, and I say that like, you know, it's a bad thing. Uh, i got to spend about eight hours in the car tomorrow, so no video update tomorrow. Uh, which is fine because we're not going to miss anything. But on Sunday, we'll take a look at this again because we'll be two days closer to that 10-day period. And I'll save some of those slides there, those graphics, and we'll see how well they verified. All right? So no video tomorrow. Take the day off. Don't worry about me. Tropics will behave. And we'll uh, talk about things again on Sunday. All right? Have a great weekend once it gets here. 
For me, it's already here after I sign off. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. We will reconvene here again on Sunday.